Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dutch Sheet channel, thank you very much for tuning in for my second video about this here quadcopter build project thing. It is my ultralight dead cat and it's an iFlight dead cat frame. It has a Beta FV 401 flight controller, it has Korea Ria motors, 1107 motors, it has a Runcam FEV camera, the Nano Racer or Racer Nano version 2, it has a TX100 VTX also from Runcam, and it has a crossover receiver. Now when I'm actually in the process of uh, testing that, so we'll see how everything here works out. So I'll be flying the quadcopter on these lipos. These are Rush lipos, uh, Rush FPV. You probably know Rush from their VTXs. They uh, have a very good reputation in VTXs. And this is a 3S lipo, 450 milliamp hour ATC. And yeah, we'll see how those perform. These actually have a an extra special feature. They have an, an extra outer layer, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to actually see it because it's uh, transparent. But um, yeah, it's not really needed for this this project as this quadcopter is light but we will be landing on the lipo so maybe yeah um, it, it protects the lipo a little more than just uh, the colored shrimp crab you see on all other lipos okay as this um, is an ultralight let's have a look what it actually weighs so let's see the quadcopter itself weighs in at 87 grams which is pretty nice 87 grams for a 3 inch quadcopter, pretty nice. With our LiPo it brings 137 grams to the scale, which is also pretty nice, obviously well within the 250 gram limit. Uh, what? Oh, it's apparently it, it gained 1 <laughs> gram. Uh, yeah, 138 grams. I'm pretty happy with that number. Pretty nice. Yeah, I'm happy with that number. That should fly well. Also, I'm going to be flying the quadcopter with this here radio, the FR Sky X-Lite Pro. I must say I'm pretty happy with this radio. I had expected not to like it as I usually like big heavy uh, radios, but it's ergonomic and it's easy to take with you. Yeah, the sticks or the gimbals rather are a bit small. This is again the pro version which has aluminum gimbals and Hall effect gimbals so it's pretty precise but the gimbals are small. I'd say that this is an advanced pilot radio. You'd think that this is a beginner radio but because it's pretty touchy I'd say this is an advanced radio. Oh well this here is the FV goggle I'll be using, this is the Skyzone Sky03 OLED version, their top of the line goggle and I've been using this goggle for a while, it is excellent. Yeah, it's not a DJI digital uh, FV goggle obviously, but uh, I call this my, uh, well, my cheating in the FV game. Before I had this goggle there were a couple of cameras that I really didn't like, that I had a hard time flying with. With the same cameras I can now fly easily with this goggle. So yeah, this is a great goggle. I'll be doing a long term review of this goggle in a while. And also I'll be a DVR recording with this goggle. With that all said and done, let's go and fly. Here we go. Alrighty guys, long story short, I am extremely happy with the performance of this uh, ultralight dead cat I built. I've had a couple of ready to fly toothpicks, even though this is not a toothpick, right? It's a 3 inch quadcopter, but you know what I mean, there have been a lot of new toothpick style quadcopters, ultralight, 2.5 inch, 3 inch quadcopters uh, lately in the last half year. I've had several from different companies and sure I did enjoy flying them as I generally 
enjoy flying any quadcopter as long as it <laughs> at least flies reasonably well, but they never wowed me. Uh, they never had the performance I like, and that's partly due to where I fly. Actually, the, the field I'm flying at now is pretty small. It's reasonably suitable for toothpick quadcopters, but still kind of too big. You feel like you are flying a quadcopter that's too slow if you are flying a tooth, toothpick quadcopter on in this location. Right? Simply because they aren't super duper fast. With this new self-built dead cat, Ultra Cat, <laughs> Ultra Cat, I can. Uh, this field is now actually feels like it's too small. It's pretty fast, and I'm flying it on Betaflight 4.1.2 here. No RPM filtering, regrettably. That's not possible with this board, but uh, still a stock tune, and it flies uh, pretty fast. Yeah, um, is everything perfect? Nah, it's never perfect. <laughs> yeah, I've got the, the wide angle version of the Roncam Nano Racer here, the one with a 1.8 millimeter lens, I think. And the camera performs gorgeous, but the lens is too wide for my liking. That's a personal thing. You might like a very wide angle of view. A lot of people do. I like me a slightly more narrowed down field of view. Actually, I got my replacement camera in today with the 2.1, I think, uh, lens. So, same camera, but with the uh, different lens. So, I'll be replacing the, the lens on this quadcopter. That's what I'll do. One other thing, I was flying the quadcopter at 25 milliwatts. You can see that in the top right corner. E3L, that L stands for low. So this was, uh, actually it works out pretty well. I did fly up to kind of the end of my FPV range. But um, yeah, so I've got, uh, what is the top output, uh, the maximum output of this uh, VTX is 100 milliwatts and that would probably be, be perfect. What more can I tell you? Yeah, the Rush LiPos worked out well, 3S LiPos, and uh, they weren't warm at all. So that works out very, very nicely. So I'm super duper happy with the outcome of uh, this quadcopter. Yeah, this was um, at the end of the afternoon on a clouded day. So it doesn't look sunny at all. It shouldn't, right? So long story short, I'm again very very happy with the outcome of this little project here. Uh, it all started with Beta FEV sending me this uh, all-in-one flight controller board and I must say that I had kind of almost given up on the toothpick class of quadcopters. I'm not saying there's something wrong, they are bad quadcopters, it's just not something for me. That's what I thought. Until I built me this quadcopter, uh, this one is finally um, fast enough to my liking. And again, that's mostly due to the, the locations where I fly it. Uh, I, most times I have a lot of room, so <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, want a slowish quadcopter. If you fly at uh, small parks and such, uh, a slower quadcopter would make a lot of sense. But again, um, for me, this, this works out very, very nicely. And again, I've got uh, the new camera in. This is indeed a 2.1 millimeter lens version. Other than that, Runcam Razor Nano 2, same camera. So uh, I'm gonna put this camera into the quadcopter and that is basically it. Actually, I must say that I was pretty happy working with this uh, Beta FV board. So I'm gonna build me another quadcopter with this board. This time it'll be a 4 inch quadcopter, just for the hell of it. <laughs> so that'll be coming up uh, in a month or so, I think. I've only ordered up that uh, all-in-one board so far and a frame. But uh, again, that'll be coming up. And let me see what more. Yeah, the, the, those lipos, 
These are the first Rush FV LiPo's I've used. Work out perfectly and I have no idea if they actually make them themselves, probably not. But um, this is a uh, an option in uh, the in the smaller toothpick style of quadcopters. 450 milliamp hour 3S, these work out well. And that's it. If you have questions, hit me up a comment down below. And catch you on the next video. Bye bye.